Yes, Paco Sandway and Henry Lau and Padim Israel and then Fernandez, Ubalde and Thurkill will play the front court. The game is underway amidst a crowd of about 12,000 here with the Ultra, notwithstanding the heavy downpours we've been having all day today as a result of the monsoon rains. Here is Arnie Guantles. The turnaround is no good. Padim Israel on the right face of the right bank with the defensive rebound. Juan Fernandez picks it up from the floor. He's arrest and they finally bring it to the front court. We're 30 seconds into the ball game. Score, love all. Here's Freddy Ovalde getting the baseline, going to Mon Fernandez. He fires one of Philip Cesar and misses. The rebound going to Mr. Michael Young. And here's the famous great pace pass break at work. Oh, okay, follow up there by Alan Kaizik. That's the key. That's the key man for great pace coffee. Joe, I was going to say earlier, but we had no time for it. That fast break point, great pace only scored 11 in the first encounter and Dwight 18 and 11 points that's nothing for great taste coffee they were average averaging 29 fast break points coming into this uh, final series so they'll have to go to their fast break game definitely so the rum makers beat them on their own game in game number one eh? right. all right the three gentlemen incidentally who are acting the roles of policemen in this contest are dr king cruz mr Hernando Desma, and mr minardo felipe here comes willie hanawalao out, out sprinting philip cesar but missing the shot alan kaydik for the rebound intimidation there by philip cesar Ricky Brown with a three-point attempt. Won't go. Arnie Quandis snaps it off to Michael Young. Still won't go. He gets it back. Tries again. Still won't go. Arnie Quandis turn oh, again. Oh, Arnie Quandis. <laughs> wow, helping You know, out. that thing came around full circle, huh? Right. And I'm sure Coach Trey Valentine is not very happy with that. Thirteen Ubalde and Israel were there, and they couldn't get that defensive board. Arnie Quandis is going to play um, an important role also here for the great taste coffee makers. The coffee makers off to a blazing start. The Sandwai still scoreless after a minute and 50 seconds of action. Juan Fernandez has the basketball. His nemesis, Philip Cesar, as usual, is on him. A time-honored rivalry between two of the grizzled veterans and pioneers of the league. One second left in the shot clock. It's all over. Yes, they did not realize that time was flicking away and uh, great taste coffee is playing good defense. You know, that's another thing. When push comes to shove, that's where Tantuai plays their best. But Great Taste Coffee should be prepared in tonight's encounter to wrap it up with the rump makers. That's, that's key also here, Joe. I like the way you put it. When push comes to shove, and let's hope that shove doesn't come to punch. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. That's going to be another ball game altogether. We've got a foul. Actually, a health ball. A health ball, I'm sorry. Yes, Juan Fernandez went and double teamed on Michael Young. So they're going to both jump now. Juan Fernandez jumping against Michael Young. Well... There's really no distinct advantage here on the part of Michael Young because Juan Fernandez is regarded really as a second import for the Tandrai Rum Makers, but he's got his right hand heavily yes. bandaged. Heavily taped, right. Alan Kaidik uncorks. Yes. Oh. He's come out here to score for Great Taste Coffee. Alan. Oh, the guy is smarting from all the ripping he's taken from the Great uh -huh. Taste fans as well as detractors after his lackluster performance in game number one. On scoring only five points. And Perkill takes one off Michael Young. A pad short. It falls right in the hands of Arnie Podlis. Philip Cesar. Too far, too far off. What was he trying to do? He's too high off. I think an alley oop for Michael Young. He must have been a visible <laughs> player somewhere there. <laughs> anyway, that alley oop certainly didn't materialize. It's a six to nothing count on the scoreboard after close to three minutes of action. The Rum Makers may have been saddled with the euphoria of the victory in game number one. Freddy Ubaldi. Okay, we were correct. When Thurkill got that ball in the paint, there were four run makers on him. What a pitch by Alan Kaidik. And a perfect catch by Arnie Twadless, but not so perfect shots. But he keeps it alive for great pace. He tries again and makes wow. it. Alan Tenacity. Alan Kaidik and Arnie Twadless are doing it all now for great pace coffee. Huh? Very good quality minutes we're seeing right here at the start of the ball game. Notwithstanding the fact that Arnie Twadless' is right thigh is heavily wrapped too. But Dim Israel, they're getting some scoring suck now from their defensive minister. 8-2 is the count. First basket for Tandwai turned in by Fatim Israel. Well, we have the occasion to be with Fatim and... Uh, oh. oh, did you see that? <laughs> yes. Somebody that conked Philip Cesar on the nose. Notwithstanding that, Alan Kaidik, a three-point shot. I think he's still immaculate 100% of the floor. 11-2 is the count. A nine-point lead for Great Pace. But remember, in all their past games, mainly those that were lost by the Great Pace coffee makers, they placed to early leads only to fizzle out in right. the dying moments. Right, exactly. Right. Defensive piece of action there. It was Arnie Twadis that came over and gave help defense again. Arnie Twadis has been playing with a lot of maturity in this conference. David Thurkill, the man to watch for great pace. Will it have it out? Passes it over to Mon Fernandez. The 363 turn did not fall, but 
It drew a consolation prize in the form of a from Arnie Flood. Flood just gets his first personal foul, and there in that instance again, Juan Fernandez had it at low post and three coffee makers on top of one. So I think that the battle cry for great taste coffee. Collapse on Mont Fernandez, collapse on David Thurkill. Let them get their shot from the outside. Earlier, remember you said that Padim Israel uh, sank one. And that's very good for the Tanguay Ram makers because if the other locals can shoot from outside, then Fernandez and Thurkill will not be double and triple teamed in the key. Exactly. In the first game, actually, the only outside hitman for Turing Valenzuela was Freddy Ubaldi. Okay, here is Arnie Fuentes. He takes one of Freddy. Yes, sir. Very good shooting first stages from the floor for Great Taste Coffee, and that's what they do best. A 10-point bulge now for the coffee makers with 7.53 to go in the first quarter. That's right, we're almost five minutes into the first semester of this game. We're using semester now. Cool year terms. <laughs> okay. And Israel will inbound from the baseline. Freddy Walde comes out of a big from Mont Fernandez. Here's Mont taking one off Philip Cesar, and it's the Pat Short once again. Beating third kill to the rebound is Michael Young. Here's Ricky Brown working the ball to the right wing. Now gets the baseline. He misses a point blank range. And counter pass break in the works here for the Tanguay Wap Makers. Goes to Fatim Israel. They don't get any pass break points. And Philip Cesar pointing a finger at third kill. But the referee did not blow his whistle. Here's Alan Kaidik. As wow. cool as a cucumber. Woo. That's Alan Kaidik for you. 15 3, a dozen point lead for the Great Face Coffee Makers. You know, an early timeout might be, might be called by Coach Turing Valenzona. He'll have to regroup. It's a 15 3. Yes, there's a timeout we're expecting. We'll be back. A fire diver grimly determined Great Day squad coming out of their huddle with Coach Baby Delupan. They're up by 12 points with 7 minutes and 12 seconds. While you can understand why the coffee makers are playing this way right at the outset, the significance of winning this second game is not lost on them because a second victory in a row here for Tanguay would make their chances of a comeback very grim indeed. Freddy Valdi, in the meantime, just sunk his yes. first charity for the fourth point of Tanguay in this ball game. Yes, not only Grim, Joe, but that's going to demoralize the squad. That's two straight defeats. And those 15 points by Great Taste Coffee have been scored. Nine points by Alan Kaidik and six points by Arnie Twades. Two players we thought would play key in this game. Well, what we don't know yet is how hot Ricky Brown is. He hasn't been taking too many attempts. And here is Michael Young banging bodies with David Turkill in midair and getting his bucket. A steal by Arnie Twombis. And it's a four-point swing by the Great Taste Coffee Makers. Boy, these Boy. guys are going berserk. Yes, and talk about maturity. He really... Oh, but he, he seems to be limping now. He's limping. He's hurt his right knee and he's asking to be relieved. And there's only four players on the floor right now for Great Taste. Al but Alan, Alan Kaidik. Alan Kaidik and Arnie Twombis. Wow. I don't think Coach Trin Valenzona expected this from these uh, from these two locals, Joe. Well, unless somebody calls a timeout here, <laughs> the Great Taste will have to make do with four players as they try desperately to wrap up Arnie Twadles' right thigh. There was no injury actually on the part yeah. of Arnie Twadles. His wraps just came loose. Right, the tape just came loose, and he's playing without that now. 21-7 is the count. Big 14-point lead for the Great Taste Coffee Makers. We're close to the halfway point of the first quarter. And this has to be a record low for Tantuai, scoring only seven points in six minutes of action. A fall away by Ricky Brown won't go. Mon Fernandez for the rebound. It's open court basketball now with Freddy Ubaldi at the helm. Twantles tries to stop the shot in vain. Freddy Ubaldi, the outside sniper for Tantuai. They well, need all the outside artillery they can get. You know, uh, Alan Kaidik has come to play with a lot of vengeance here. But Dim Israel held him to five points in the first game. But no way, Jose. He does for him. I'm going to score right in your face. I think he's got 12 points. 11. 11 points, indeed. Michael Young in the three-point region. David Thirdgill. He went very close eye on him. His fall away is no good, but he draws a foul from Willie Henneralau. First personal for Willie Henneralau. Incidentally, what? David Thirdgill of the Rob Makers. You probably notice him sporting a specially designed pair of basketball shoes from Crosby, the official basketball shoes of the PPA. And before anything else, a timeout. Here's one for you, Mr. Trillio. Get an eyeful of that gorgeous face in the crowd. Uh, I would love to run into her. What faces? <laughs> faces? No, I tell you, the crowd that faces look just like her, Joe. The place to go. And here's Michael Young, looking for his fourth marker in the bag. 23-9. 14 point advantage for the Great Face Coffee Makers, looking to level the series at one all in this second game. 
David Thirdkill works it over smartly to Willie Hanwalao, who knocks it off the foot of Philip Cesar. During that timeout, we noticed how Philip Cesar followed the lead of Arnie Twadlis. He also removed the wraps from his injured ribcage. Right. I think it was bothering him no end. Yes, and uh, Arnie Twadlis was substituted by Joy Carpio. I think they're, they're uh, putting the tapes around his uh, leg again. Or side. That's probably hurting. Uh -huh. Probably suffered a contusion there somewhere. Right. It's not a knee injury, it's a thigh injury. Ricky Brown connects from the corner. Guns blazing for great taste coffee. And you know, those are really quality minutes uh, put in by Arnie Twadlis. He had about three interceptions, and that can really demoralize your opponent. And I think Mon Fernandez is really suffering from a painful right hand. He took the rocks away from it, too. Alan Kaidik unleashes from the three point region and misses this time. Counter fast break, and it works here for the Rob Makers wearing the light colored jerseys. If you're watching this in color, the Great Taste Coffee Makers are resplendent in their yellow uniforms with a white trim. Padim Israel is open, and he connects again. 2-4-2 two for, two for Padim Israel from the field. There is the offensive game of Padim Israel that had been conspicuously missing from the last several games of Tandwai, although he's been very consistent as a defensive specialist. Michael Young working against David Thirdkill. The fall away is good. Hey, Great Taste can't do anything wrong, at least in this first quarter. 27-11. You know, Joy, watch when the Great Taste coffees are offensive. You see about 10 photographers there, just all with the cameras up. I wish we could take a shot of that. Oh, boy. That would make a great memorable souvenir photo. And Mr. Ledesma blows his whistle from the rear. Carpio is slapped. His first personal. That would be the 14th fall for Great Taste against only two for Tandwai. And Willie Hanawala will inbound from the left side line. Four minutes, nine seconds left in the first quarter. Israel versus Joey Carpio. Michael Young has amply covered David Thirdkill. There's the, do there's the Alan Kaidik coming over to give help defense. They cannot spot an open man. Joey Carpio might uh, get the second personal. One, one Fernandez. Yes, I think that's the second personal for Joey Carpio. You know, maybe the Lupin seems to have worked out a very smart defensive blueprint for yes. game number two. Huh? You know, the one that double teams, uh, double teams um, third kill is the one on the opposite side of the court, and that's Alan Kaidik. That, a great follow up by David. That time, yes, good position by David third kill. That's him two points. 27-13, still a whopping 14-point lead for Great Taste with 3 minutes and 42 in the balance for the first quarter. Joey Carpio goes outside to Philip Cesar. Philip looking to join the elite club of 10,000 point shooters in the league. He's only 35 points away from it. He hasn't scored a basket here so far. Oh, Alan Kaidi didn't take very good care of the basketball. That's not a backing violation, but only 4 seconds to go. A uh, desperation shot by Philip Cesar. From his backcourt. That's right. <laughs> well, he had to do something. Time was running out. Third kill against Alan Kaidik and Michael Young leaving Padim Israel open, but he goes to Freddy Hubalde. He draws a beat on the basket. Good, Bullseye. good ball rotation there. Good ball rotate ball movement. Padim was open, but he saw more open. Freddy Hubalde gave it up. Well, that is one of the tenets of a real professional. Padim Israel realizes his limitations. He knows that Freddy has the better outside shot. Now that why starting to play better defense. Like the opening minutes of the first quarter here. Yeah. The sophomore shot by Michael Young and Ricky Brown follows up. 29-15, back to a 14-point edge for great pace. Time down to 2 minutes and 40 seconds in this first act of the unfolding drama. There's Kaidik giving help defense. And then he'll look for his fan because Sturk will stop dribbling that ball. Juan Fernandez puts up the elegant shot, draws the foul from Philip Cesar. The only first. his first. Only the first, um, right. Okay. You know... Philip Cesar played a great defensive job on Mon Fernandez in the first game, but Mon Fernandez was able to extricate himself in the closing minutes to even act out the hero's role. Right, that's when it counted most. 29-16. That's why nibbling away at that deficit. It now stands at 13, and you can just make that 12. Two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Great Pace is on the verge of team foul trouble with six and why with two. Ricky Brown. The cerebral called general for Great Pace taking one of winning and will allow the follow-up by Philip Cesar draws a foul. All right, it's tip for that. It's Mon Fernandez's turn now to pick up his personal off Philip Cesar. He really had to dig deep into his bag of tricks. Just a lot of experience to get that foul off Mon Fernandez. You know, that's another very interesting side bite of this series. Uh, this personal duel. The time-honored rivalry between Mon Fernandez and Philip Cesar, two of the brainiest centers in the entire league. Right. 
and a lot of credit will have to go also to Philip Cesar huh, for limiting Mon Fernandez. Nobody does that to Mon, just no one. Well, they say that alone among the locals in the league, only Philip Cesar can contain Mon Fernandez on a one on one basis. 31 17, 14 point advantage for Great Days. 2 16 to go in the first quarter. Willie Hinoalao has to cope with Alan Kaidik. Not very much motion offense here, but it's a fly rock maker. Right. Juan Fernandez makes his move. Leads to the pressure oh, behind. Beautiful move that time. Nobody switched over and Juan saw the open lane. 31 19. All right, the rock makers are keeping that deficit down to a manageable level. 12 points. A minute and 52 to go. Still in the first quarter. Full house here with the Ultra for game number two of this championship series. Alan Kaidik sails in and misses with a layup. Loose ball, struggle for one by Willie Hanover allows. There goes the pitch to third kill. He throws Philip Cesar rough balance for the easy two. Nothing Philip Cesar could do there. 31 21. All right. Great Looks like Tantwai is on the right track. Yeah? Right. Great day's coffee at 16 fouls now. Three for Tantwai. There's isolation play for Michael Young. I'm not sure it was that three point attempt. And Mr. Ledesma declares a foul on the loose ball struggle. Yes, that's the second personal for Willie and Ponche de la Cruz. Last game's hero also. He scored four points in the closing minute of play. I think might have to come in for Henry Lau. Arnit Wallace is looking fine now. He's coming in for Joy Carpio. Looks like his five wraps are in place again. Arnit Wallace from Cebu. Willie Henry Lau from Cebu. And a spate of other guys all from Cebu, including Romy Quintanar. That guy was not from Cebu. He's from Houston. <laughs> Houston Cougar, former. 33-21, 12 point lead for Great Case. Time down to 64 seconds in the first quarter. David Third Kill goes outside to Freddy Ubalde. Third Kill, medium jumper is good. Okay, that was only his sixth point, incidentally. Alan Kaidik is now well covered by Padim Israel. They're putting their best man on Alan Kaidik, who's turned out to have the hot hand for Great Case tonight. Ricky Brown is threatening to explode too. There's the lob pass intended for Arnie Twantless. Miss communication. Uh, miss communication. Miss miss communication. Clearly. Okay, De La Cruz comes into the ball game for Willie Henerlau, who's got two personal fouls. And Arnie profusely apologizes to Philip Cesar. Looks like he acknowledges his fault in that particular blunder. De La Cruz goes to Freddy Valdi. Juan Fernandez in the right wing. The elongated arms of Philip Center are making things very tough for him, forcing him to a fallaway shot that falls short. All right, good outlet pass to Alan Kaidik. He consummates. That time, Alan Kaidik too, took two steps in the air, Joe. He just hung and shot the basket. Only 10 seconds to go in this first quarter. Still a 12 point lead for great pace. Third kill. He's not exactly known for his three point shots. But he had to take it in the face of the dying seconds. And that's about the size of the first quarter. We'll be right back. <laughs> 